Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is the 1903 Cleveland Naps AL MLB baseball season. For the fifth year in a row, the Cleveland pro baseball team had a new name. In 1899, it was the Spiders, 1900 Lakeshores, 1901 Blues, 1902 Broncos, and now the 1903 Naps, short for Napoleon Lajewey. And again, they were playing in the, in the American League, which was the still relatively new league, only the third year as a major league. And home games were played at League Park, still a wooden structure, not the solid brick structure, which, would, which was coming in about uh, eight years. And the Cleveland Naps in 1903 had a strong year. We were a contender and uh, with, a, with a very bright future. We finished in third place with a record of 77 and 63 Winning percentage of 550. Uh, 15 games out of first place. 14 games over 500. Very good. First place team was the Boston Americans, who were 91 and 47, later renamed the Boston Red Sox. Second place, the Philadelphia Athletics, 75 and 60. Of course, they moved to uh, Kansas City and then, and then later Oakland, California. Third place, the Cleveland Naps, 77 and 63. Fourth place, the New York Highlanders, 72 and 62. Of course, they were renamed the Yankees and became the, the dominant team in Major League Baseball in the 20th century with guys like Babe Ruth, and Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, and so forth. Fifth place, the Detroit Tigers were 65 and 71. Sixth place, the St. Louis Browns were 65 and 74. Seventh place, the Chicago White Stockings, 70, 60 and 77. And then in eighth and last place, the Washington Senators, 43 and 94, 47 and a half games out of first. The attendance at League Park for 1903 was 311,280. That was fourth out of the eight teams in the American League, and that was a record. So, um, and it was up 36,000. Total fans and the average the average uh, fans per game was four thousand four hundred and forty seven. Now this doesn't seem like much today because things have changed so much, but uh, things were moving in a positive direction and uh, things were attendance was improving. And but you know things take time. The game was evolving. The Cleveland Press newspaper, the afternoon newspaper, had a contest to rename the team because people a lot of people weren't happy with. The name Broncos. So the votes came in, and there the, the most votes were 365 for the Napoleons. Since our player, Napoleon Lajoie, was the best player in baseball, and he was the new guy, and he had he turned the uh, Cleveland into a contender. And later it was shortened to the Naps, and that 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 was the, that got the most votes. So that became the new name. The other teams, the other names, the Buckeyes had 281 votes. Emperors 276, Metropolitans 239, Giants 223, Cyclops 214. That's pretty cool. And then others that received lesser numbers of votes were the Cleveland Terrors, the Pashas, the Dachshunds, Majestics, Mastodons. That's cool. The Midgets, Tip Tops, Cracker Jacks, and Prospectors. So only uh, 365 people decided the fate of the Cleveland, uh, the name of the team. Of course, back then, the, the teams didn't have official names. They would be called the Clevelands, or just Cleveland, and then the nickname would change. And so these, uh, so it was the Cleveland Press newspaper that had that was uh, influential in changing the name from the Broncos to the Naps. In 1903, there was peace between the American League and the National League. They worked out their differences. You know, they realized even even. Well, the National League accepted the American League, and then you know, the owners had to get smart because, you know, the payroll was going up. They kept competing for players, and so they finally had a uh, – the, the National League finally accepted the American League, and they, they negotiated a, um, um, uh, an, a, an agreement, which, which is still standing, and, and the two leagues are f up till now for Major League Baseball. And there, therefore, there was the first, the first modern World Series was played – between the American League got a champion, the Boston Americans, against the Pittsburgh Pirates, the National League, 
uh, champion. And the uh, Boston won. The Boston Americans won five games to three. Back then, you had to win five games. So they were Boston Americans were the uh, Major League Baseball champions for 19, 1903. At the home opener here in Cleveland at League Park, the, the attendance was 19,867. That was a huge crowd for Cleveland. Again, that's very modest for today's, uh, today's uh, numbers, especially if you think of the state, the old Cleveland Stadium, which had 80,000 seats. And so during that game, uh, uh, there were so many fans, and they were, they were crowding the field, especially the outfield. During the game, reserve players had to grab hands and form a, an outer ring at the edge of the outfield to push the fans back so the game could continue. <laughs> now, the Cleveland Naps had Sunday games in Canton, Columbus, and Dayton. They still were not permitted to play off Sunday baseball in Cleveland. That was, not, that was not, still not legal. On opening day, there were temporary bleachers that were erected uh, for, for the expected large crowd, which d- showed up, and th- those temporary bleachers collapsed. So this was a potential horrific tragedy. Two men were trampled and were unconscious. You know, there was a huge, there was a mass of bodies and, and broken wood. <laughs> but nobody died, and uh, apparently, I believe these two men recovered. They were taken in a horse-drawn ambulance to the hospital. There was a brief delay, but the game continued. In one game at League Park, Against the Tigers, in the bottom of the eighth inning, Cleveland was batting, and there was an apartment building beyond left field there. The janitor put too much coal in the furnace, and a huge cloud of smoke drifted over into left field. There was a towering fly ball to left field uh, from the the bat of Cleveland shortstop John Gochnar. The Tigers' left fielder Sam Crawford could not see the ball. It disappeared into this cloud. So he didn't make the catch, and Addie Joss scored the winning run. Pretty funny. On, on July 9th, a very sad thing happened. Uh, Ed Delahante, a Cleveland native who played for the Cleveland uh, Infants in 1890 and was one of the top players in baseball, his body was found. He had died at the bottom of Niagara Falls, and he was mourned here in Cleveland. And it was very tragic. He developed a drinking problem and a gambling problem which led to his death. So God bless Ed Delahante. Now the manager again in 1903 was Bill Armour, who was not a player. He was a regular manager. He returned for a second year as manager of the team. Now the uh, starting lineup, Fred Abbott was our starting catcher. Abbott hit 235, 11 doubles, 3 triples, a home run, 25 RBIs, 8 stolen bases in 77 games. Abbott was from Versailles, Ohio. Interesting name. You know, it reminds me of Paris, the royal family. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're uh, yeah, in, in, in Paris, France. Uh, Abbott died in Los Angeles, California, 1935 at age 60. His career average was 209, one home run, 49 RBIs. Abbott played for the Cleveland Naps Philadelphia, and Philadelphia Phillies between 1903 and 1905. His uh, name, his given name when he was born was Harry Frederick Winbigler, but then he changed that. He became known as Fred Abbott. He's buried in the Valhalla Memorial Park Cemetery in North Hollywood, California. In, 19, in 1898, 1898, in the minors, he played for the New Orleans Pelicans. So the NBA team, the New Orleans Pelicans, they revived that old uh, minor league baseball name, Fred Abbott. Charlie Hickman was back at first base, old piano legs. Hickman had a good year at 295, 31 doubles, 11 triples, 12 home runs, 97 RBIs, really good numbers, 14 stolen bases in 131 games. And Hickman was in the middle of his, uh, his career in Cleveland, which was uh, lasted uh, from 1902 to 1904. Tremendous player. Charlie Hickman, piano legs. Napoleon Lajoie was back at second base. Uh, the best player in baseball. Lajoie hit 344, really something. 41 doubles, 11 triples, 7 home runs, 93 RBIs, 21 stolen bases, and 125 games. Lajoie pl- played for Cleveland from 1902 to 1914. And he led the league in hitting. He had the top batting average in the American League in 1903. And uh, he was f- free to play in Philadelphia. You know, they worked things out with the. Uh, he actually had to appear in court with some other fellows in Philadelphia, you know, and he apologized because he was uh, 
in contempt of court, and everything, the case was dismissed because, you know, there was peace between the two leagues now, and uh, the Philadelphia Phillies accepted the fact that he was now playing for Cleveland. Uh, Tommy Leach of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Pittsburgh, Pir- Pittsburgh Pirates outfielder, said this, quote, Later, after Ed Delahanty died in that tragic way at Niagara Falls, the big heroes of the kids in Cleveland became Napoleon Lajouet, the Cleveland's second baseman. What a ball player that man was. Every play he made, he executed so gracefully that it looked like it was the easiest thing in the world. He was a pleasure to play against, too, always laughing and joking. Even when the son of a gun was blocking you off base, he was smiling and kidding with you. You just had to like the guy. Lajoie had a cigar store on East 6th Street, which was a thriving enterprise. He spent a lot of time there, and fans could come in and visit with him and other players. Uh, now, before the year, in, Dece- in the offseason, in December 1902, Lajoie had a lung infection, which turned into pleurisy. He had fluid in his lungs. They had to make an incision in, in his side to drain the congestion. So this was pretty serious. And he was in bed for two months. And so actually his year would have been better because early on he was still weak early in the season from this uh, serious health crisis that he had. And so the, the name of the team actually was the Napoleons, which was shortened to the Naps, named after him, really something. On August 8th, the Naps were playing the Tigers at League Park. In the bottom of the 11th, the Tigers were ahead 6-5, to five, and it was the late afternoon there was uh, an old grass-stained ball, which was hard to see. You know, it was getting darker. Lajue uh, complained, you know, it's hard to, you know, if you're a hitter, you want to have a nice white ball thrown, uh, pitched, so you can see it better. And this this uh, ball was, you know, grass-stained and, and dull. Now, the, the umpire refused to r- remove the ball. He said, no, that ball's okay. <laughs> Lajue took the ball and threw it out of the grandstand, out of the, out of the ballpark. The umpire declared a forfeit, and Cleveland lost that game by forfeit. The Cincinnati uh, Times Star wrote this, quote, Napoleon Lajoie is just a big-hearted, good-natured, hail fellow, wet met, well-met man off the field. Now, Lajoie would walk very little. He hated to walk. He, he was up there to hit. And so he would, and actually sometimes he would, uh, on, a, on a pitch that was way out of the zone, on the, on the other side, he would use one arm to try to hit the ball. He also struck out very little, so usually he would make contact. In his career, he only had 346 strikeouts for his entire career. You know, you have guys today who have 200 in one year. <laughs> uh, anyway, so like I said, he would swing with one arm at balls with, on the other side of the strike zone. He cut a hole in the palm of his uh, fielding glove so he could feel the Feel the ball against his bare hand. This was a common practice at that time. Uh, his, his, his defense was really it was, was so good. He had really good range, and he you know, had good glove, good arm. He's ranked first. Uh, he's ranked first or second among the as the greatest defensive player of all time at, at any position. So not only could he hit tremendous hitter, but he was a tremendous fielder as well. This is why he's uh, considered such a tr- tremendous player. John Gotchnar was back at shortstop, and and he uh, Gotchnar hit 185, 16 doubles, four triples, 48 RBIs, 10 stolen bases, and 134 games. And this was his second of two years in Cleveland. Gotchnar, they kept hoping he would uh, improve his hitting, and actually his fielding wasn't that great as well. Although actually Napoleon Langevin's range was so great that he would take anything that he could get to. John Gotchnar, the Shortstop for Cleveland in 1903. Uh, At third base, Bill Bradley returned. Bradley had another fine year. He hit 313, 36 doubles, 22 triples, 6 home runs, 68 RBIs, 21 stolen bases in 136 games. And Bradley uh, played for Cleveland from 1901 to 1910. So he was er early on in his tenure with Cleveland. He was an all-star, one of the best players in baseball, Bill Bradley. In the outfield, we had uh, Elmer Flick again, who hit 296, 23 doubles, 16 triples, two home runs, five, 51 RBIs, 24 stolen bases in 140 games. 
Another fine year for Elmer Flick. And he and Lajue were getting along now. They, they'd had some conflict when they played together for the Philadelphia uh, Phillies. And Flick was, again, played for Cleveland from 1902 to 1910. So he was early in his uh, very nice tenure, long tenure in Cleveland. Tremendous player, Elmer Flick. Jack McCarthy was another regular outfielder. McCarthy hit 265, 20 doubles, 8 triples, 43 RBIs, 15 stolen bases in 108 games. And this was the, uh, the last year for Jack McCarthy in Cleveland. He played three years. Jack McCarthy. Harry Bay was another uh, regular outfielder. Bay hit 292, 15 doubles, 12 triples, a home run, 35 RBIs, and 45 stolen bases, which led the American League in 140 games. And Bay had a fine career in Cleveland from 1902 to 1908. So he was uh, back. He was had many more good years to play for Cleveland. Harry Bay. Now the bench players included Harry Bemis, who actually played a lot. He was some, you could consider him actually our starting catcher. Well, he must have played some other positions. He played in 92 games. He, Bemis hit 261, 20 doubles, three triples, a home run, 41 RBIs, five stolen bases, and Bemis played for Cleveland from 1902 to 1910. So they, Cleveland had some stability. A lot of players who were playing stuck around for a while, year after year. So that was good. Another bench player was Jack Tony, who was in the outfield. Tony hit 205, three doubles, a home run, nine RBIs, seven stolen bases in 32 games. And this was his only year in Cleveland, 1902. Well, no, his second year in Cleveland, I'm sorry. Actually, there's a story that uh, playing center field, he threw a ball to the plate, which was, which was a wild throw, went way up into the stands, way high. And almost hit the Cleveland um, co-owner, Jack Kilfoyle, who, who demanded that he be released. Jack, Jack, Jack Tony, And apparently he was released after that. Another bench player was Billy Klingman, who was an infielder. Klingman hit 281, 18 hits, a double, a triple, 7 RBIs, 2 stolen bases in 21 games. Klingman was from Cincinnati, Ohio. He died in Cincinnati in 1958 at age 88. Career average of 246, 8 home runs, and 301 RBIs. Klingman played for the Cincinnati Reds, Cincinnati Kelly's Killers, Pittsburgh Pirates, Louisville Colonels, Chicago Orphans, Washington Senators, and Cleveland Naps between 1890 and 1903. And the Chicago Orphans, were they, caught, they got that name because a Cap Anson, who'd been their famous player and manager, was gone. So they said, oh, they're orphans without Cap Anson who actually was the guy who, kind of a bad guy, who led to the, um, baseball banning African Americans. Billy Klingman. Jack Hardy was a spare outfielder. Hardy hit 158, three hits, a double, an RBI, a stolen base in five games. Hardy was from Cleveland, Ohio. He died in Cleveland in 1921 at age 44. Career average of 182 and five RBIs. Hardy played for the Cleveland Naps, Chicago Cubs, and Washington Senators between 1903 and 1910. Jack Hardy. Happy Ayat was another outfielder. Ayat hit 200, two hits, in 10 at-bats, scored a run, and had a stolen base in three games. Ayat was from Holton, Maine. He died in Island Falls, Maine in 1941 at age 64. His MLB career was just with the Cleveland Naps in 1903. His given name was Frederick. In 1897, with the Holton Town team, he won, they won, his team won the, the Maine State Championship. In 1903, with the Fall River Indians in the New, the New England League, uh, Ayat won the league batting title when he hit 317. He also played in the Connecticut State League in the minors. Happy Ayat. Jack Slattery was a spare first baseman. Uh, Slattery batted 11 times, did not get a hit in four games. Slattery was from South Boston, Massachusetts. He died in Boston in 1949 at age 71. Career average of 212, 61 hits, and 27 RBIs. Slattery played for the Boston Americans, Cleveland Naps, Chicago White Sox, St. Louis Cardinals, and Washington Senators between 1901 and 1909. He was the manager of the Boston Braves in 1928 uh, for 31 games with a record of 11-20, 
when early in the year, and then he was he resigned and was replaced by the famous Rogers Hornsby. He pl- went played. He went to college at uh, Boston College and Fordham University. He was the head baseball coach at Harvard University for a time. Jack Slattery. Hugh Hill was another outfielder. Hill got in one game, batted once, did not get a hit. Hill was from Ringgold, Georgia. He died in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1958 at age 79. Career average of 223, 94 hits, 4 RBIs. And he played for the Cleveland Naps and St. Louis Cardinals between 1903 and 1904. He's buried in Charleston, West Virginia. Hugh Hill. Now the pitching staff, our ace pitcher was Addie Joss. Joss has a hitter. Hit 193, 22 hits, 5 doubles, a triple, 6 RBIs in 34 games. Joss's pitching record was 18 and 13, an ERA of 2.19, 31 starts. He completed all of them and had 3 shutouts. And Joss played for Cleveland from 1902 to 1910. These, all these core players who were with the team for an, a, a nice stretch. Joss was injured in a train wreck during the season. This, the train went off the tracks and into a ditch. Uh, it was pretty, pretty scary. Before the season, in October 1902, Joss married Lillian Shinovar Sh- Sh- in Monroe, Michigan, because there was no waiting period in Michigan for a marriage license. They made their home in Toledo, Ohio, his wife's hometown, where Joss had played minor league baseball. During the season, uh, Joss joined a barbershop quartet with his teammates. In a game in Philadelphia against Rube Waddell, in the 15th inning, there was a walk-off home run by Ollie Pickering for Philadelphia. And uh, so Joss lost that tough game. The Cleveland Plain Dealer wrote this, quote, that Joss looked like a, quote, sunflower going to sleep at the close of the day. He pitched 15 innings and lost because Cleveland couldn't score. And that train wreck, uh, Joss said this to the Cleveland Press newspaper, quote, I thought it was the engine on top of me, but it was only Hick, Charlie Hickman. When Hick falls on you from a distance of five or six feet, you know it all right. He ended up missing the entire month of September. He had a serious fever, and perhaps he had had undetected internal injuries from the train wreck because he he developed this serious uh, high fever not long after that, uh, that uh, accident and did not pitch for the rest of the year. Addie Joss. Earl Moore was second in the rotation, and Moore uh, had a tremendous year. It didn't hit very much. He hit 092, eight hits, six RBIs in 20, 29 games. His pitching record was 20-8, and eight, ERA of 1.74. Really, really good. 27 starts, 27 complete games, and three shutouts. More pitch for Cleveland from 1901 to 1907. So we had those first two pitchers in the order were, you could say, were both ace pitchers, Earl Moore. The third pitcher in the rotation was Bill Bernhard. Bernhard hit 185, 12 hits, two doubles, four RBIs in 20 games. Bernhard's pitching record was 14 and 5 with a tremendous ERA of 2.12. Very good. 19 starts, 18 complete games, three shutouts. Bernhard played for Cleveland from 1902 to 1907. Bill Bernhard. Another starting pitcher was Red Donahue. Donahue hit 151, eight hits, three doubles, six RBIs, and 16 games. Donahue's pitching record was 7-9, and an ERA of 2.44, 15 starts, 14 complete games, and four shutouts. Donahue was from Waterbury, Connecticut. He died in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1913 at age 40. Career record of 164 and 175. ERA of 3.61. 787 strikeouts. So he had a good career. He pitched for the New York Giants, St. Louis Browns, Philadelphia Phillies, Cleveland Naps, Detroit Tigers between 1893 and 1906. In 1890, Donahue had a no-hitter. In 1897, he was the National League and leader in strikeouts, uh, games pitched, games started, and complete games, all those things. In 1897, that year, he lost 35 games, which is a Major League Baseball record for losses by, one, by a pitcher in a season. He died of paralysis, which is the loss of muscle function. Red Donahue. Another pitcher was Gene Wright. 
Wright hit 209, nine hits, two doubles, three triples, three RBIs in 15 games. Wright's pitching record was 3 and 10, an ERA of 5.75, 12 starts, and eight complete games. And Wright played for Cleveland. Uh, this was his second and last year in Cleveland, 1902 and 1903. Gene Wright. Gus Dorner was another pitcher. Dorner hit 080, two hits and 25 at bats, two RBIs in 12 games. Dorner's pitching record was 3 and 5, an ERA of 4.52, eight starts, four complete games, and two shutouts. And Gorner pitched for Cleveland from 1902 and 1903, so this was the end of his two years in Cleveland. Ed Killian was another pitcher. Killian hit 179, five hits and 28 at bats, a double, four RBIs in 10 games. Killian's pitching record was 3 and 4 with an ERA of 2.48, eight starts, seven complete games, and three shutouts. Killian was from Racine, Wisconsin. Reminds me of the scene from the movie uh, A League of Their Own. And this character, Kit, says, I've been traded to Racine. Killian uh, died in Detroit, Michigan in 1928 at age 51. Career record of 102 and 78. ERA of 2.38. 516 strikeouts. Killian played for the Cleveland Naps in 1903. And then the Detroit Tigers from 1904 to 1910. His career ERA of 2.38 is 24th best in MLB history. And he, uh, he went 1,101 innings pitch without allowing a home run. He had two 20-win seasons, and, 19, and he played the 1907 and 1908 World Series. 1907, he led the American League with eight shutouts. They called him Twilight Ed, Ed Killian. Jesse Stovall was another pitcher. Stovall hit 0.45 a hit and 22 at-bats and an RBI and a stolen base in six games. Stovall's pitching record was 5-1 with an ERA of 2.05. Six starts, he completed all of them, and two shutouts. Stovall was from Leeds, Missouri. He died in San Diego, California in 1955 at age 79. Career record of 7-14, ERA of 3.26, 53 strikeouts. Stovall played for the Cleveland Naps and Detroit Tigers between 1903 and 1904. His brother, George Stovall, became an MLB player and played for the Cleveland Naps from 1904 to 1911. Jesse Stovall. Bob Rhodes was another pitcher. Rhodes hit 118, two hits, and 17 at-bats and five, in five games. His pitching record was 2-3 and three with an ERA of 5.27. Five starts, he completed all of them. Rhodes was from Wooster, Ohio. He died in San Bernardino, California in 1967 at age 87. A career record of 97 and 82. Really good. ERA of 2.61, 522 strikeouts. Rhodes pitched for the Chicago Orphans, St. Louis Cardinals, and Cleveland Naps between 1902 and 1909. He got a no-hitter in 1908 for Cleveland. They called him Dusty. So in other words, he was Dusty Rhodes. There was another guy named Dusty Rhodes in the 1954 World Series who hit, actually hit a game-winning home run in Game 1, and he had another home run and another couple hits, so he was one of the guys that helped beat Cleveland in the 1954 World Series. So this is a different fellow, Bob Dusty Rhodes, same name. Another pitcher was Alex Pearson, who as a hitter he hit 083, one hit in 12 at-bats in four games. Pearson's pitching record was 1-2, and two, an ERA of 3.56, three starts, and two complete games. Pearson was from Greensboro, Pennsylvania. He died in Rochester, Pennsylvania in 1966 at age 89. A career record of 3-8, and eight, ERA of 3.85, and 36 strikeouts. Pearson played for the St. Louis Cardinals in Cleveland Naps between 1902 and 1903. So this was the end of his brief MLB career. Alex Pearson. Martin Glendon was another pitcher. Glendon had batted eight times, did not have a hit. He had a walk and a scored a run in three games. His record as a his pitching record uh, for Cleveland was one and two with an ERA of point, 0. 0.98, three starts and three complete games. Glendon was from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He died in Chicago, Illinois in 1950 at age 73. Career record of one and three, an ERA of 2.05 and nine strikeouts. Glendon pitched for the Cincinnati Reds and Cleveland Naps between 1902 and 1903. He was six foot five, 
and it was said that he was, quote, full of sassafras, tea, and ginger. Glendon continued in the minors until 1908 and had a record there of 96 and 87. Martin Glendon. Ed Walker was another pitcher. He batted three times, did not get a hit. He had a walk in three games. His pitching record was 0-1 with an ERA of 5.25 and three starts. And Walker pitched for Cleveland from 1902 to 1903. So this was the end of his time in Cleveland. Ed Walker. And finally, Bill Pounds was a, was another pitcher. Pounds batted 500, one hit and two at bats in one game. He did not have a decision. His ERA was 10.80, one game, five innings pitched, and seven earned runs. Pounds was from Patterson, New Jersey. He died in Patterson in 1936 at age 58. He had no decisions in his career and an ERA of 8.18 with four strikeouts. Pounds pitched for the Cleveland Naps and Brooklyn Superbas both teams in 1903. He had a long career in the minor leagues, and he had a career MLB, uh, for his career in the MLB as a hitter, he was 3 for 5, so he was a 600 hitter in Major League Baseball. The Utica, New York Observer newspaper wrote, quote, Bill Pounds was the champion sweater of the league. He perspired so much that a miniature lake formed around the slab. So that's the story of the 1903 Cleveland Naps, who were a contender we had Napoleon Lajoie and Addie Joss, two Hall of Fame pet players. So they, they, were, they were a contender. So it was a lot of excitement in Cleveland with this very strong team. And God bless the guys who played for the Cleveland Naps in 1903 and everyone else associated with the team, including the fans, especially the Civil War veterans and the Spanish-American War veterans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp Statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, Euclid Avenue Electricity, First Energy Stadium Friends, Progressive Field Pals, Quicken Loans Arena Enthusiasts, Severance Hall Stalwarts, Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters, and, and uh, Gladiators Rule, Cleveland City of Champions. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you, take care, and I'll see you next time.